Alpha, just hold one, copy three, bring Test control is confirmed and we're okay to proceed. Test is ready. I'll be okay. It's truly been an amazing year for our team. We've had a string of F-35 firsts. Engine spool down and IPP assisted air starts, night flight and night aerial refueling, carriage of external weapons, and highway testing to the aircraft design limits of 50 degrees. We've also had A-120 and GBU-31 separations. We continue to expand the envelope of the aircraft and we are accomplishing some of the most difficult, time-consuming testing for the entire program in this area. But the testing has quietly shifted from turning the aircraft into a flying machine to weaponizing it. The professionalism of our workforce is what gets it done. And we're fortunate to have the most talented engineers, test pilots, maintainers, flight test engineers and support staff around. They solve some tough challenges every day so that we can do developmental tests. Each of these successes was preceded by unique challenges that the test team worked through. This is the hallmark of our organization, working through difficult problems to safely and professionally execute flight tests. 2012 is an incredibly successful year for the F-35 program. The F-35 is doing very, very well in its testing, and from the uh, very top of the program all the way down to the uh, senior leadership here at Edwards, I can say without a doubt that every single person is in huge support of this program. One of the incredible milestones that we accomplished here in the last several months has been air start testing on both the Air Force variant and the Marine variant of the F-35. We needed to be able to prove that the engine could restart itself if there was some kind of a malfunction airborne during the high alpha testing. The first time you, you turn off your only engine two and a half miles up in the air is certainly a unique experience. Uh, the test team was uh, really well-oiled machine. Their ability to execute on script and then adapt uh, off script was really a testament to the professionalism and training that went into the, the testing itself. Overall we conducted 29 different air starts for approximately 40 minutes of essentially glider time in the F-35. Some very uh, high-risk testing that we were able to execute essentially flawlessly. Edwards is the leading edge of the air start testing because of our large access to many different landing surfaces out here. It's a unique asset that's the only one uh, in the world and it's something that we do from a safety perspective that makes it good just in case something doesn't go to plan. This summer the Edwards team hosted a, a Stovall jet from Pax River Naval Air Station in support of their air start testing. Air start testing is a precursor to high angle of attack testing. We need to make sure that the engine can perform in all types of situations before we push the jet to its limits in high alpha testing. In the coming months, Edwards is going to be receiving two Stovall jets of our own, and having BF2 out here provided us an opportunity to see what kind of challenges we're going to be facing with the new B-model type aircraft. On 18 January, the ITF completed the first night flight of the F-35, and we quickly followed with the first night aerial refueling in late March with the KC-135. We took the uh, aircraft off just prior to sunset so we could kind of fly into the darkness as the, as the night progressed and watch how the lighting worked. Uh, overall, just outstanding, the cockpit lighting, the formation lights on this airplane, all just excellent. And as we got into total darkness, the uh, landing taxi light uh, proved to be one of the, the brightest and best landing taxi lights I've ever had the opportunity to fly with. The lighting was just excellent overall, both in, inside the cockpit and around the airplane. 
And that allowed us in the spring then to begin our uh, night qualifications on the KC-135 tanker and the KC-10 tanker. In both cases, uh, the airplane was just a joy to fly at night and on the tanker. dropping both internal and external stores. We'll drop each of the weapons that the airplane will be certified for. So far we've dropped 2,000 pound JDAMs from internal stations. We've dropped AMRAMs from internal stations. And we did the first drop from an external station today with a GBU-12. We've got predictions for how each piece of ordnance should separate from the airplane based on how much push is on the rear and, and the forward foot. Uh, right now our predictions have gone pretty much as planned. Uh, we measure some dynamic uh, loads and we look at geometry as the piece of ordnance falls. We can tell if we meet our predictions, if we match our model, or if we don't. If we match the model, we move on. If we don't, it's back to the drawing board. So we're the ones out there going fast, maneuvering at the edge of the envelope every day. As we expand the envelope, we also get a good look at the flying qualities of the airplane in the extreme conditions. We started in the center of the envelope about two and a half years ago, and we've been working our way out ever since. We're now out to max symmetric G, max rolling G, 100% uh, allowable limit load. Uh, we're testing clean with stores in the bays, external stores, air to air, air to ground. What has really impressed me about this airplane is how how easy it is to fly in the extreme parts of the envelope. What that will translate into is that the uh, airplane will be very easy to fly for the fleet pilot who is main concern, should be and will be, uh, employing its mission systems and its weapon systems. Throughout 2012, the ITF tested upgraded versions of Block 2A software on three mission systems test aircraft. Over LA, we did some urban environment testing with the EOTS and DAS system to see how they could react. Over Los Angeles, you've got all different traffic, light airplanes flying around, tons of buildings, different sun reflections, that sort of thing that might distract the system or the pilot while he's using it. Out on the Pyra, we had uh, some moving vehicles and we did GMTI, which is ground moving target indicator. And the jet can track moving vehicles on the ground and display that to the pilot to give him more essay on his radar picture about what's going on down on the ground. Uh, with AF-7, we had a 500-pound bomb that we blew up uh, to see what the DAS image looked like after explosions happened and make sure that the pilot can still see things in the DAS and doesn't get his image whited out in his picture. The ITF has tested and identified issues with fusion, data links, targeting, communication, and navigation. This testing permitted us to document discrepancies and provide recommendations to the software team, ensuring that the warfighter gets a predictable and stable software load to train with. In the flight sciences regime, towards the end of this year, we were able to take the aircraft to the high AOA limit of 50 degrees from 20 degrees in four days. And we'll continue that testing in 2013 as we prepare to depart the aircraft and do spin testing as well. One of the very early things we're going to do with the airplane is put it out of control intentionally. And the spin recovery chute on the back of the airplane gives us the confidence that if it does go out of control, we can always get it back. Based on the analysis and the simulation we've done, we don't expect the control loss of the airplane to allow it to go out of control, at least not very easily. But that's why we do flight tests, because we never know exactly what's going to happen until we go try it. Even with that thousand pound tripod on the back, it doesn't feel any different. Almost uneventful.
We do high angle attack testing for a couple of reasons. First of all, this aircraft has the capability to go there in controlled flight and fly and maneuver and engage and employ. For in a more traditional sense, any aircraft can be put out of control and we take all of our aircraft to high angles of attack to look at where their departure boundaries are and how recoverable they are once you exceed the departure boundary. So high angle of attack test program is one of the highest risk programs that we do in flight tests in general. When we put the aircraft at this extreme of an, of an angle of attack, at least with older generation aircraft and older generation engines, just being in that flight condition increased the chances of losing the engine. The engine in the F-35 has performed really excellent so far, and we haven't had any issues like that. What we learn will go into uh, the flight manual, the training manuals for, uh, for operational pilots so that any insights we learn about maneuvering the aircraft, care and feeding of the airplane at high angles of attack will be passed along to the operators. We're into the basics right now. We move to different configurations, different centers of gravity, different sets of maneuvers. Eventually we're going to take the spin recovery chute off and start uh, working our way towards more operationally representative stuff. And this is a program that's been going on here for quite a while. We send the F-35 into combat for the first time, they're going to dominate their adversary. Our focus is on testing and delivering capabilities to the warfighter, and our team is thrilled to be right in the middle of weapons integration. This first weapon release is a result of hundreds of hours put in by our test team here at the ITF. This is an exciting time where we get to take and build upon all the work that's been done by the hundreds of people involved to get the airplane to where it is. And now we get to put the weapons on board and test the compatibility, test the effectiveness of these weapons coming out of the internal weapon bays of this stealth, multi-role, fifth-gen platform. The first air-to-air -air weapon separation was a significant first step toward delivering combat capabilities to the U.S. and its international partners. It's an important milestone in testing as we start an exciting multi-year weapons program. We are incredibly proud of the work that we do here at Edwards in developing and evaluating the F-35. We're tough evaluators because we recognize what's at stake. This is a point in the program that everybody dreams of being involved in the testing, and all of us recognize how fortunate we are to be here right now.